This video is going to be one of those fundamental understandings of CSS Grid, and it's something that's going to keep coming up. So let's make sure that we, we absolutely nail this before we move on. And that is understanding the implicit grid, implicit tracks, and explicit tracks, and the explicit grid, and how we can sort of use them together in, in order to make a really flexible and, and fluid looking website. So open up 05 and the starter file that we have there. I've got four items here, and I've displayed grid it. Let's go ahead and turn on our dev tools here so we can see how it's looking. And I'm going to make my tracks black. Good. Now, let's go ahead and make sort of a two by two grid that we have there. First, we'll put some gap on there, 20 PX. Good. And then we'll add some columns. And let's do 200 pixels and 400 pixels. Now we've got a grid with two columns in it, and then we have two rows. So this is the difference between the explicit and the implicit. I have explicitly defined what the columns will be, and then I have not defined what the rows will be. So those are what are called implicit. So if you do not create them, they are called implicit, meaning that the browser says, OK, well, you've made two columns. Great. I can put one and two there. But now I've got these extra elements left. What do I do with them? Right. Like you can't just throw them out. They need to go somewhere. So what it will do is it says, OK, well, I have no more columns to put them in. So I might as well start to wrap onto the second line and that will then create a row. So even though we did not define any rows here, the they have been implicitly created. So if we then zoom in to, to see everything that we have, you'll see that the solid line means that that is where our explicit grid has been started. And then the dotted lines means that is where the explicit columns have been created. And then the dotted uh, horizontal lines are a little bit lighter, and that means that they are implicitly created. Watch how that changes if we just let's dupe this over and change it over to rows as well. And now you'll notice that if we zoom in, first of all, we they are much bigger because we have defined what the sizes of those rows will be. But now if we zoom in, you'll notice that the horizontal lines that we have in DevTools here are now solid and dashed and not opaque and dotted. And that is because we have explicitly defined what they will look like. If we scroll down here, you'll see also we have a solid line. And that means that is where the explicit grid ends. So solid line is where the explicit grid starts and stops. So you can see that it's the, the column starts here and the columns end here and then up here. The columns start here, or sorry, the rows start here and the rows end here. So this is a hundred percent explicit. Um, let's make these a little bit smaller in terms of rows. So maybe we'll do 50 px and a hundred. Now here's the big question: What happens if I now add a fifth and a sixth item to this? Whoa! What just happened there? Well, we we only told it that we want two columns, which is is fine. So one, two, and but then we only size two of the rows. However, we have six items. So what's happening is that CSS Grid is going to say, well, uh, OK, I'm done with the explicit grid. See how the solid line ends right here. But I've got extra items, so it's going to then create a, um, a new row for us. And that is referred to as a what? An implicit row. Good. So we've gone over these. We've got our gap. We've got our grid template columns and our grid template rows. We've done those a, a bunch of times. Now the question is, how do I size these implicitly created ones? Right. We can we can go ahead and size uh, the values for the explicit ones, no problem. But the implicit ones will look a little bit something like this. So we say grid auto rows, and the grid auto rows will define how big the rows are for when they have been added. So if I were to then add, uh, let's do something ridiculous like 500 PX. Now you'll see that any extra implicitly created rows are now going to be 500 pixels high. So if I were to, to dupe these over into 7 and 8, you'll see that 5, 6, 7, 8, all of those implicitly created rows are going to be 500 pixels high. You might be thinking, OK, well, could I do something like this? 100 PX, 500 PX. And if we go and inspect it, 
you go on five and six. Let's look at the rules here. Let's look at our container. You'll notice that it's actually crossed out. And that's actually currently um, an open issue at the time of recording in Firefox is that uh, in Firefox, you are not able to define uh, what multiple implicit, the size of multiple implicit rows. And if we were to open that up in Chrome, you'll see that it actually does work. So uh, you should be able to do it. It should be fixed fairly soon. Um, but at the time of recording, you're only able to pass one value for the implicit rows. Okay, uh, we also have grid auto columns. And let's say that would be 100 px and give that a save. Now that doesn't that didn't do anything. And that's like, how do you get extra columns? So uh, by default, what will happen is you define your columns and then any extra elements will automatically be turned into rows. But that's where the next video comes in. We're going to be talking about something called grid auto flow. And that is uh, instead of automatically giving us rows, we're going to automatically give us more columns. So I'll see you in the next video.